Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K Facebook Live video. And today I'm going to show you how we made a little gift box. Well, decorated a little gift box. I didn't actually make the box other than assembling it. Um, thankfully, Stamp It Up has some really good um, boxes and, and gift bags and things that we can use to uh, decorate. So I'm going to show you how I made this one today with the Poinsettia Petals uh, Stamp Set Bundle. So. If you are joining today live, I appreciate that, and feel free to say hello. Um, if you are watching the replay, that is awesome as well. So um, say, you know, feel free to leave a comment if you would like to. So, hey, Catherine, thanks for hopping in today. I appreciate you being here. And um, so we're going to go ahead. Let me get rolling. A couple things before I go or get started on the gift box is Curvy Celebrations is now live for ordering for customers. So this is a new stamp set bundle and a new kind of suite of products that Stamp It Up has available starting today. Hey, Pam and Barbara. Thanks. And Karen, I see that you're here as well. So thanks so much for joining today. Hopefully I didn't miss anyone else. Um, so we have got the quite curvy stamp set bundle, which is a, a cute little stamp set, good sentiments and things in it, and a coordinating bundle that's available um, together for $41.25. And then they have some coordinating products that are available only during the Christmas time, essentially. So from now until January 4th, while supplies last, you can get the curvy Christmas stamp set in the coordinating designer series paper, which is the classic Christmas 6x6 designer series paper. So all the details are posted on my blog today, which is stampwithamyk.com. Com. So feel free to hop out there and take a peek at it. And um, the other nice little bonus is that Stampin' Up! has put all of this stuff together. So the stamp set dies, stamp set um, designer series paper together in a big bundle and save 10% on the whole bundle. So definitely a good deal. So go take a peek at that. As a little added bonus, um, we've done some group tutorials for this awesome set of products, and we've got five video tutorials um, with written instructions as well, so written and video tutorials for you. So if you purchase either the um, Quite Curvy Bundle or the Variety Bundle from me, you're going to get those tutorials as a bonus for free. So um, if you order them anytime between now and January 4th. So let me know if you have questions on that. I would love to chat with you more about it. And um, let's get going on the, the actual project today. Hi, Bree and Tammy. Thanks so much for hopping in today as well. All right, so the stamp set we used, which I'm sure you've probably seen it. If you haven't, you need to look at it. <laughs> it's definitely a good one from the... Um, August to December 2020 mini catalog. This is one, it's a um, photopolymer stamp set, two-step stamping, and it's absolutely beautiful. Love the sentiments in it. And what I really love about it, well, there are many things I love about it, but I also really love about it is that um, there are some coordinating dies that go with it as well. So um, the dies count some of the stamped images and there are some standalone dies. And so it's definitely a good set, a good bundle. So if you do not have this, you definitely need to get it. All right, let me set that aside. Um, one other thing that I did use on this, oh, of course, is the um, the little tag I actually cut with one of my new favorite die sets in the annual catalog. This is the Hippo and Friends die set. So it is a good one, and um, if you don't have it, you definitely need to get it because these the dies in this are awesome. They, they coordinate with so many of our sentiments and make such nice layers, so you definitely need to get it. All right. Enough about that. So let me set that aside and um, let's get going on the project. So I started and I know this is very shiny in the lights that I have, so I apologize. <laughs> but this is one of the gold mini uh, pizza boxes that Stampin' Up! has. So I don't know if you've seen them in the catalog or not, but um, they have some white ones and they have the gold ones and they're really cool. And I'm sure you can see my ugly face reflecting in this. So yikes, sorry about that. <laughs> so they're actually quite easy to assemble. All that you need to do is pop out. There are little die cuts here, here, and here. Um, sometimes they fall out in the bag. Sometimes they do not. So you need to pop those out and then fold up the corner pieces and edge pieces. This is the bottom part of your box. So we've got the little hole cut here for the, the little finger hole. And then fold up the end, fold it over again, push it down in so that the tabs are locked in together here. And that's all there is to assembling the bottom of the box. And the top of the box is equally as simple. And this is why I love these. You just fold up the um, on the score lines for the box and then fold it closed. And ta-da, your box is all assembled and it looks fantastic. And yes, 
even I can do this. <laughs> hey, Kathy. Um, so, all right, so we've got that. That is the, um, the base that I'm working with today. So the card, well, I guess it's not a card. It's a, um, a box base, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've got some of the Shaded Spruce Ribbon from the Wonder of the Season Combo Pack um, Ribbon. And I'm actually going to use that, and I'm going to wrap it around the box and overlap it a little bit. And I'm actually wrapping it so that it's going to end on the top because the pretty flower that I'm putting on it actually will um, cover up where this is stuck together in the middle. All right. Um, it is really easy, Catherine. I mean, they're, they're super, super simple to, to put together. So yes, if you haven't done it, haven't gotten them, you definitely need to. And I did a little testing on the adhesive, and I put this together a couple of days ago with Stamp and Seal Plus. And I think you're definitely going to need some of this adhesive if you do not have it yet, because it's awesome. And it's actually holding essentially the entire um, package the top on the package. So I used the, the Seal Plus, and I put a couple of strips on it on the bottom of this, you know, hopefully you can tell the, the back side of the ribbon. And then I'm gonna flip this over the top, flip the other one over the top, and then line them up so that they're pretty close to together. And then just press down, and that's actually what's holding everything on this. This entire band slides off the box, which I sort of intentionally designed it that way so that you didn't have to rip the whole top of it apart because it's too pretty <laughs> in order to either put something inside it or for somebody to open it. So the ribbon just slides right off and so does everything else that's attached to it. So, so that is the reason for putting the adhesive on the ribbon and not sticking it on the top of the box. All right. Um, the next thing that I have is one of these square vellum doilies and they come in a little package. And I'm just going to place that right across the top and in the center here. And I'm going to take, again, my stamp and seal, and I'm just going to run it across the top of the ribbon that I just put on here. Um, I, I'm a little careful just because I don't want to, like, pull really hard and actually tug the ribbon apart. Um, but you don't have to be extremely gentle with it. So, all right, so I've got this, and I'm just going to go ahead and line this up. Um, where it's at on the box isn't as important to me as where it lands on the ribbon. So if it's not exactly centered top to bottom on the box, that's okay. Um, you want it to be centered on the ribbon because, again, your ribbon, you can slide up and down on it. So... All right, uh, all right, so we've got that put together. Um, next up, and I did a whole bunch of the die cutting ahead of time, so just because it's kind of boring to watch nothing while I'm die, <laughs> die cutting. So I have got, these are the poinsettia flowers. They are cut with the poinsettia dies. Let me show you which ones I used. I used this die set, so it's the one that cuts around the outside as well as embosses, this one and this one. So it's the largest, the medium, and the, the smaller one of these. Um, that I used to die cut some of the red velvet paper, which that paper is really pretty. If you don't have any yet, you definitely need that as well. So, hey, Arlene, thanks for hopping in. And Linda, I see that you are here as well. So thanks for joining today. And then I'm just going to use some glue dots here in the center. So just sticking them on the center of the die cut flowers. And then I'm going to just layer them up like this. Super simple. And again, just sort of making them offset so that they're covering and you know covering the whole, so you can't see through it. <laughs> that was kind of the result that I wanted. And I know it's probably hard to see in the light on here, but hopefully you can see a little bit of the texture in the red velvet paper because it's really, really pretty. If you don't have some of that, you need this too. So you need it all. <laughs> so, all right. Um, next up on the back side, just in the center here, I'm going to put a couple of my little half Stampin' Dimensionals, or you can put just one if if you prefer. Um, but just put them in the center again because the way we're adhering this to the box and adding all the other pieces on, you don't want a bunch of, of dimensionals stuck all over the place because then you're going to have a harder time tucking the die cut pieces underneath it. So, Hey, Julie, thanks for hopping in. I'm glad you like the project. Um, so again, I'm trying to make sure this is somewhat centered over my um, ribbon. And again, centered over the top of the the uh, little vellum doily. And again, I'm just checking to make sure that, yep, I've got everything in the right spot because I can still slide the, the ribbon around. So again, um, if you don't mind somebody ripping your whole project apart, you don't have to worry about <laughs> what, you know where you put the, the ribbon at but um, or where you put the adhesive at. But I wanted to make sure that, um, especially since I was not filling these right away because I didn't have the goodies to put inside, I wanted to make sure that um, 
I was able to still maneuver the, the ribbon on and off. So again, ahead of time, I did some die cutting. These are the leaves and I've just cut them from Garden Green cardstock. And this is a smaller leaf. And again, these are from the poinsettia dies. So I use this leaf and this leaf. And it's the cutting and embossing pieces that I put together. And I'm using glue dots to adhere them together. And I'm just gonna tuck them right underneath the poinsettia that I've already got on the, the top. And again, just being careful where I put the glue dots to make sure that um, I'm sticking them in a spot where they're going to stick in the right place and um, still be able to slide the, the um, little topper off. All right, so again, got another glue dot here. And I'm going to take that and tuck it right underneath here on the other side. The nice thing about glue dots is you can sort of maneuver them around a little bit if you don't get it put in the exact place that you want. Next up, I did some die cutting again. I did a lot of this ahead of time because again, I know how boring it is to sit and watch die cutting. It's like watching paint dry. <laughs> so, um, hey Denise, glad that you are here. All right, and uh, I did a little die cutting ahead of time with the uh, brushed metallic 12 by 12 cardstock. And this is, again is just a, one of the little dies from the poinsettia dies. So it's this little one that looks like the branch here. And I'm actually, um, I trimmed off some of it already, but I'm gonna trim them a little bit shorter uh, just because the, when they're really long, they're hard to get tucked in the place that I want them to be on the, the little box top. So I wanna make sure that I have plenty of room to move them around and um, not have to worry about the, the little extra stem being too long and stick in some place where I don't want it to be. So again, just took a glue dot, stuck it to the back of the die cut. And then I'm gonna take this, oh, I think I tucked it up in here a little bit higher on this one and then yep stuck on the right spot hopefully yep still slides so we're still good that's what I kept checking every time I would stick a piece down is I'm like can I still slide it yep okay well I'm good <laughs> and then same thing here where I'm just going to take this and tuck it up underneath the poinsettia on the other side um, next up I've got a couple of the little die cuts these were stamped with the poinsettia petals stamp set and I realized after the fact that I was not paying attention. Hey, Jerry, thanks for hopping in today. So I was not paying attention at all when I looked at the stamp set. I didn't realize that, that you could actually stamp these <laughs> um, with the, these two go together and you can stamp the, the little um, berry images. But I had gotten busy and got everything all stamped and um, was gonna color them with Stampin' Dimensionals or Stampin' Dimensionals with uh, Stampin' Blends. So that's still my plan today is I've got, um, I stamped this ahead of time and die cut it with the uh, dies from the poinsettia dies. I stamped it in soft suede ink. And then I have got my Real Red Stampin' Blends marker. And I'm gonna use the light color first, come in here and color the, the berries on the one. And then, oh, thanks so much. I appreciate that, Danette. And then I've got the dark um, Stampin' Blends, the real red one here, and I'm just gonna come in. And towards the bottom part where it's already shaded, I'm just gonna add a little bit more color in. And I'm probably not even really gonna blend these because I don't know that you can really tell that much um, because they're not very big. So I don't think you need to spend a whole lot of time coloring and blending. Or if you don't want to spend any time coloring and blending, um, just don't do what I did and stamp them instead. Because, <laughs> gosh, I couldn't believe that when I looked at the image after the fact. And I'm like, oh. And then I thought about stamping them here live. And I thought, nah, because it'll look different. And anyway, so I'm just going with the coloring thing. So I'm showing you two techniques. That's it. I wanted to show you the coloring technique. Not that I screwed up. <laughs> So it's okay, y'all could laugh if you would like to, because I, I was laughing at it. I told my daughter, and she's like, Mom. <laughs> so, all right, and then, whoop, coming back in with the dark Real Red Stampin' Blends. Again, just adding a little bit of shading at the bottom. And remember with Stampin' Blends, if you get a little crazy and go out of the lines with them um, a lot where you want, you, you want to fix it, you can always grab your color lifter and come back in and um, kind of push the color back in the lines. So I do that often because I do make a lot of mistakes when I color as well. All right, so we have got these ready to go on the project as well. And I'm just going to, again, use some glue dots and tuck them up underneath 
So it happens to the best of us. Well, I'm glad it's not just me, Catherine, because I was feeling like a total dingling when I looked at that and went, oh, I should have just stamped them. <laughs> but all right. Hey, Anita, I appreciate you being here. Glad you're joining today. And then I'm just going to tuck these up here underneath this as well. And then the final piece, oh, I guess I need to put the center on. Oh, I almost forgot that. Um, I've got the beaded pearls, which are so, so pretty. If you don't have these, another one of those things that you definitely need to get um, because they're amazing and they look perfect over the top of the poinsettias when you die cut them. So I've got that as my center on it. And then last piece is just going to be doing a quick stamping and die cutting of a sentiment. Um, so again, I've got Real Red ink, and the sentiment is from Poinsettia Petals. And just going to do a quick tapping on the ink pad, stamp it down, lift up, set this out of the way, and hopefully not stick my fingers in the red ink. And then again, I am going to uh, take the little die here. It's the smallest of the octagons from the Hippo and Friends dies. And I'm going to do some die cutting. When I cut it, I'm intentionally going to put it off center a little bit because, again, I'm going to be tucking it underneath the flower. So I want as much of the sentiment showing as I possibly can. So no mistakes in stamping, just opportunities for something different. You are correct. That's it. I didn't screw it up. It was I wanted it to be that way. <laughs> so thanks, Pam. All right. So I'm just going to do the die cutting here off to the side. Hopefully going to run it quickly through my die cutting machine and not make a mess. All right, so let me pop this out of the, the um, die there. And we've got that part done, and I'm just going to take a little glue dot, and again, we're going to put it on the back, kind of towards the top up here like this, because again, just knowing where I need it to land here underneath my poinsettia. I'm just going to take that and tuck it up here, hopefully. Whoop. I've got to move it a little bit because I put the poinsettia on in a different place than I did the last one, but I think it'll work um, either way. I think this, this one's a little bit more off to the side. Um, the one that I did originally is a little bit more, a little further down, if that makes sense. So that is all for the project today. So hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you like the little boxes. Um, it's a great bundle and super easy to use. You could even take this if you wanted to do a coordinating card with it and do essentially the same thing and put it on a card front. Um, maybe change up the sentiment a little bit or even keep the same sentiment. But either way, you can definitely could take this and lift it off and put it on a card front as well because it's just an awesome, awesome set of dies and you can do lots and lots of things with them. So thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully you all have a fantastic um, rest of your week. And uh, I will not be live like I usually am at two o'clock on Friday. Stampin' Up! has their demonstrator on stage at home event, so I'll be tending that all day on Friday. But I will be back here next week, uh, Tuesday, around two o'clock Eastern Time Live, so you can catch me then. And again, all of the, the details for this project will be posted out on my blog tomorrow, and I will share a link in this video so that you'll be able to find it. If you need to go back and take a look, um, I'll also have printable instructions, PDF instructions for it as well. So uh, thanks for joining and hope that y'all have a good rest of your day and we will chat soon.